the starting goalie, Stolenkov for Dinamo, Besser for the Leafs, and the first period is underway. Pearson tips it into Dinamo's zone. Prolock gives it to Seamack. He backhands it up on the left side. It's picked off by Pearson looking for Crucial Niski, and the puck rolls to the corner. Crucial Niski back at the point to Tom Kerbers, who's in the Leafs lineup tonight. Pearson looking for Crucial Niski in front, couldn't get the pass through, and it's cleared to the point. Kerber's back behind the goal. Proloff is there for Dinamo. He sends it up the boards, but Richardson was waiting. Zacco can't trap it behind the goal. And the puck slides out to center right. Tom Kerber's back in his own zone. He gets it to Pearson. Leonov lost his stick on the play. Heideroff behind his net gives it to Seymour. Kovalev on the left side. To Kramstroy, puck in the corner, and Miller banks it off the boards to center. Paul Fenton for the lead, sends it into Dinamo zone. Miller in the corner with Domfu. Gets away from Womackin. Fenton behind the goal for the lead, couldn't make a play. And Sorokin starts out for Dinamo. Pass at center for Womackin, got tied up in the skates of linesman Bob Hodges. Dan Merrelli is the ref, Ron Finn. The other linesman tonight, puck is sent down the ice, and Bester plays it. Paul Fenton, lead pass for Domfu. He bumps with Uden behind the goal. Zamnoff in to help out for Dinamo. A minute 40 gone in the first period, no score. Zamnoff. Pass went behind Andreevsky. And the puck is cleared out by Miller, picked up by Domfus. He's with Broughton, two on one. Domfus couldn't get a backhand pass across. Now he puts it through the slot. Miller overskated the puck. I Brady is pushed off it. Pass is intercepted. Will Mack into the backhand. And he couldn't get a shot away. A good checking by Goodenyuk. And the Leafs fans appreciate the work of him. Well, he's got him on their side to start with. I know Floyd Smith's very high in this kid and thinks he'll be on this team before this season ends. Leaf shoot the puck in. Marawai in the corner. Gives it to Deblo off the side of the goal. It's picked up by Philibonon. He gives it to Hideroff down the right side. Takes the shot. And Goodenyuk made another fine defensive play for the Leafs. Aaron Broughton. He was tied up at center by Galchenyuk, now jumps it in to Dinamo zone. And the fans like the first shift by Alexander Godinyuk, Leafs called on the offside. Well, Godinyuk had a great first shift at the Toronto Maple Leafs. He hammered a couple of his former foes in the Russian League and moved the puck quickly up. And these are the things that his coach told me he could do. Move the puck and move people. And every NHL coach would love to have a guy like that. Very nervous. He only played one game in Newmarket. So he really has had very little experience with North American hockey. He's practiced a lot with the Leafs, but not many games. Dinamo have eight defensemen dressed. The puck is tipped out by Yakubov. Alexei Kovalev was taken to the corner boards by Richardson. Puck is sent down the ice. Karpatsov goes back for it. Around the boards for Bouton. Kovalev couldn't clear it. Puck loose at the side of the goal. Reed trying to come in front. Kerber gets it away. What a shot and a big save by Stolenko. Rebound. It waves off. He scores. Dave Reed. It went in the first time, Bruce. I don't know what Merrill he wasn't looking at, but Hannon put it in the first time. There was no question about it. And Hannon has, that would be, would be all well, these games don't count, obviously. That would be Hannon's first goal in 14 games. And that's one benefit a game like this can give players that are struggling. If they score a couple, then it's good for the confidence. And absolutely, Hannon scored the first goal. And the Leafs scored on it because the Russian players knew it went in. And they all stood around wondering whether they were going to be on the ice for the next shift or not. So I don't know who they're going to give the goal to, but this is the man that deserves it. And it's 1-0 Toronto. Michelle Petit, pass through center. Andre Kovalev, back in his own zone to Kramstoy, Pearson right on him. Joe Sacco, 
In with Crucial Nisky, goes around the defense, and a nice poke check by Frolon. Back out of the tee, his shot just wide. Leonoff stopped at center. Michelle Petit gives it to Pearson on right wing. Kramstoy checking him. Pearson trying to one-hand it in front. Zacco jams away at him, and Stolikov covers up for Dinamo. Lee tweeting one to nothing. First period, Dave Hannon did get credit for the Toronto goal, and they lead Dinamo one nothing. Telling his buddy on the bench, he says, it's tough enough to score. One goal in 14 games, and Merrill tried not to give it to me. Tom Watts hoping to see some new players. He's hoping to get some players who haven't played much lately into this game. And he's hoping nobody gets hurt. Not necessarily in that order. Buck comes into Stolinkoff. He gave it to Uden who banked it off the boards down the ice. And Bester sets it up for L.I.F. Brady. Andrei Yevsky for checking. Along with Zamnoff. Will knock it in the corner in front. A shot by Andrei Yevsky. Didn't get real good wood on it. And it's grabbed by Alan Bester. Alan Bester hasn't played much hockey this year, and he's 0-4, and oh, he hasn't won or tied a game. So it's nice for him to get back in the net and get some game experience. He went to Newmarket and played some games and makes a pretty good stop right there on the first shot by the Dynamo team. Won 20 games last year, Alan Bester, but Peter Ng's been the number one man as of late as the Leafs play better hockey. And he's one of the reasons why they are playing better hockey, Drew. He's got the night off tonight. And he deserves a rest. Good and yet. On the left side for former Jet and King Paul Fenton. He puts it behind the net. No, he puts off the shot. And he just missed the goal. Fenton in the corner. Leads have had some good chances here in the first. Sorokin. Took a hit from Miller. And it's poked out by Andrzejewski, a big right winger for Dinamo. Dom Fuchs. Back to Al Iafredi. His pass off a Soviet stick. Potekin, the captain, had trouble with it at the line. Iafredi continues on. It goes to Shalenkov. And he covers up. Just past the five-minute mark. 1-0 Toronto. Play is just underway. Dora Fayev looking in front for Gelchenyak and a shot by Hyderov went just wide. Filimonov was in from the point. Soviet four checking. Gelchenyak turning in the corner for Dinamo. Takes a weak shot. Off the blocker of Bester to Lucien Deblois. Couldn't clear the zone. Gelchenyak. For Hyderov in the corner. Curvers up the boards for Merwa. Dave Hannon has scored. It's 1-0 Leafs with 14 minutes to go in the first. Dora Payev can't split the defense. And it's Filimonov at center for Dinamo. To Galchenyuk. Gets away from Marowa at center. Galchenyuk again for Dinamo. Into the Leafs zone. Four of them were waiting at the line. And Bester tipped it to Kevin McGuire. Hyderov in front for Dora Fayev. Can't get a shot away against Richardson. That pass picked off by Hannon, and he backhands it down the ice for the lead. I think we can expect to see Dinamo play better as the game wears on. They came from Dusseldorf, where they finished in a played in a tournament Saturday, and so they're uh, and arrived yesterday. McGuire right through the crease, and Hannon couldn't get a stick on it. Michelle Petit at the line. To Hannon in the corner. Behind the goal for McGuire. Papikin is with him. Dolomanov trying to tie up Hannon. Dave Rees leading the NHL in shorthanded goal. To the backhand. Gives it to Hannon in the corner. Through the slot off the skate of Petit, but Gill will keep it in. He backhands it wide of the net. Papikin. For Dinamo to Alexei Kobolev. He overskated the puck, drops it off. Korolev. Now the puck in the lead zone for T. He sends the puck the length of the ice, about 10, back to touch it, and it's icing on the lead. Here's the uh, 
Dynamo roster. They dress 22 players tonight, four sets of five that always play together, plus the two goalies. So when you add the six coaches, the two trainers, and the 22 players, there's not enough room on Maple Leaf Garden benches for a roster this size. Harry's had that lineup rolling through his brain for the last couple of days. I was saying, Bruce, that these guys lost to Sweden in a tournament in Dusseldorf, Germany, Saturday. and came over here, so jet lag is going to be an enemy of theirs for a while, and that's why I think you'll see them play a little better as the game wears on. Dinamo called for icing. It's the end of the day, and the real work of driving home is just beginning. But not in a Toyota Camry. The Camry not only has an exceptionally comfortable ride and available V6 power, there's also the comforting knowledge of Camry's renowned reliability. No wonder more car owners said they'd prefer to buy a Camry next. So look at the others, but at the end of the day, you'll take comfort. You've got a Camry. The promise. Well, there's Rob Pearson making his uh, debut with the Toronto Maple Leafs. He was traded from Belleville to Oshawa earlier this season. Floyd Smith was telling me that it was really unfortunate that he did was hurt at training camp because they thought he was had an outside chance of making this team. He's got some ability and he's a tough cookie. Didn't know Mike Kershelnitsky could speak Russian. Saw him talking to Gudenyuk before that draw to the right of Stolenkov. Kramskoy for Dinamo. They trail 1-0 here in the first period. I have Freddy off the board. Kramskoy, an errant pass picked up by Pearson to Sacco, a shot right through the crease. Leonoff, down the left side for Dinamo. He's with Kovalev and Samak, the top scoring unit for Dinamo. Kramskoy, he gets pinned on the board by Pearson. Cut bounces into Bester. Goodenyuk. To Joe Sacco, the rookie, he rolls it through center to Crucial Nisky, who's the Leafs leading scorer since coming over from Los Angeles. Kovalev gives it to Samak, he's behind Goodenough, but he caught him with good speed. Leonoff in the corner. He's knocked down by Iafredi. Trying to skate out for the leap. Off the skate of Crucial Nisky. He gets to the Dinamo line, Prolov takes him to the boards, and Samak. Moves the puck across to Uden. Now to Andre Yepsky. Well, Mackin forced back. Nearly gave the puck away to Paul Fenton. Uden is sent flying by Miller. Back in the lead zone. Domfus loses it. Moving right in a shot. Good save by Fester. On Zamnock. Back set the length of the ice. Miller and Domfus battle for it, side of the goal. Uden to the point, Kerber. Back on the stick of Uden, and he just dumps it out for Dinamo. Nearing the midway mark of the first period, it's 1-0 Toronto. Richardson pass off a skate. Big defenseman has it back to Miller. Now to Fenton, Domfus moving in, couldn't get a stick on the puck. Ash Stolenkov stove up. Richardson from the point, his shot drifts wide. Fenton behind the goal, puts it in front. And Sorokin has it for Dinamo. To Uden. Pass to Lomak and Andre Yepsky is trailing on the play. Lomak and around the key. A backhand shot. Good save by Bester. Lee puck in front. A shot. Bester down. It's going to count at a goal, I think, Bruce. Marowelli, I think, is ruling at a goal. Marowelli was close enough to tip it in. There was a Russian player in the crease and tangled up with Bester when the shot was made. It was a long three on two by the Russians and you cannot give any Russian team I've ever seen the odd man advantage through the neutral zone. And here's the end of the three and three now. Fester makes the first save and look where he is. As he's trying to get up, he makes the next save but I think his hand is in the net when he catches it. And Marowelli was in great position to make the call. So we've had two rather weird goal calls here early in this game. Filimonov gets credit for the goal at 10.23. The red light never did go on, but Marowelli was right there to rule it a goal, and it's a 1-1 tie. You can see the goal judge will be looking back through the Russian player and Vester and may not have seen it. 
Merrill Welly was right on the goal line and made the call immediately. Todd Gill to Michelle Petit. He gives it to Gill at center on the left side to Broughton with room. A slap shot kicked away by Stolenkov. And it goes to Hyderov. Hyderov with Dora Fayez. Play broken up. Opekin from the left point. Todd Gill gives it to Lucien Deblois. Merwatt checked at the line. Deblois following up in the lead are offside on the play. Leeds and Dinamo tied at one. 23-year-old Dmitry Filimonov. And the head coach, Vladimir Yerzanov, standing right behind him. A 1-1 one -one tie, 8.43 left in the first period. Yakubov shoots it in. Dave Hannon sends Reed away for the leap. Reed trying to make a move. He was bucked by Botan. And Yakubov gets it to the point. I have Brady. Still controlling for the leap. Tried to make a play at the side of the net for Hannon. He checked for a left. Boten for Dinamo. His pass didn't get out here. Hannon right in front. A shot to McGuire and a big save by Stolenkov on Kevin McGuire. About 10 for Dinamo. He shoots the puck down the ice. Good and yet giving chase. And icing on Dinamo. Well, Kevin McGuire could not get the puck up after taking a nice pass from Hannon or the score would be 2-1. It was a nice stop by Shalinkov. The Soviets get trapped here with a giveaway. Now watch the pass. The other Soviet defenseman had a blowout there. And if, if McGuire had gone up, I think he would have scored. But the Russian goalie got across the net very quickly. And McGuire knows better than anybody as he's telling Hannon, why didn't I go into the roof with that shot? McGuire looking for his second goal against Soviet competition. Stamak will take the draw against Crucial Niski. One by big number 26, but the puck slides back in the leaf zone. Richardson had Kovalev after him. Sacco at center. Across to Tom Kerbers. He slaps it in to the Dinamo zone. Richardson along the board. Rolls it behind the goal for Crucial Niski off the side of the net. Roloff was there. Now Kramskoy into the corner. Gives it to Simak. Pass on the left side for Leonov. Andre Kovalev, the right winger, the leading goal scorer for Dinamo this season. Kerbers to Crucial Niski. Sacco is trailing the play. Crucial Niski gets around Kramskoy. Puts it through the slide. And scores! It's his first NHL goal, although it's not going to show in the NHL guide as he picked up a rebound after some very fast stick handling by Mike Kuzelitsky. He was very nervous. I talked to him before the game. He was very nervous about his debut. Look at this move here. Kuzelitsky maybe wouldn't try that in the National League, but did here. And there's Rob Pearson off the left post and in. 37 Pearson pulls into the slot and picks up this pass and puts it in that net to make it 2-1 leap. Little celebrating going on. Ah, uh, who wouldn't celebrate when you score in your first game in the National Hockey League? Fine play by Crucial Niski to set him up and the Leafs have regained the lead at 2-1. Dom Foos, forced back by Zamnov. Got to center, Uden broke the play up. Zamnov in his own zone. Sorokin gives it to Andre Lomakin. He skates through center, long shot, kicked away by Bester. The T into the corner. Off the board for Fenton, that's intercepted by Zamnov, who's dumped by Michelle Petit. Todd Gill for Paul Fenton. He backhands it to the Didamo line. Sorokin looking for Lomakin. Petit right back in for Toronto. 6.25 left first period. 2-1 Maple Leaf. Andreevsky to Lomakin. He goes to the corner after it. Grabbed by Gil Andreevsky behind the net. Penalty upcoming to the league. Lomakin. 
using the referee as a pick. And finally, play is called. The enamel power play coming up. One of the areas the Leafs have really improved in penalty killing. Well, they do against the Soviets. Galchenyuk shot goes wide. Hider off, back to Galchenyuk, feeds Philemon off the shot, he scores! The second goal of the first area. Philemonov has four goals in 27 games in the Russian League, but two tonight. He walked in off the point and beat Bester with about a 32-footer. Bester didn't have much chance at all on it. But what happens is the Leafs, three Leafs penalty killers get inside the hash mark, and then it's too far of a trip to get out to the point man that was uh, Lucien Debois' responsibility. By the time he got there, this big guy had taken one step and pulled the trigger to tie this game at 2-2. In Ammo, not that big a team, but Philomonov and Andreevsky. Brought in a shot and a save by Stolenkov. He <laughs> tries to hang on to the puck. He juggled it a little bit, but does force a face off to his right. And we've showed this young man a couple of times. He has both goals for his team. Aaron Broughton had a reasonable chance coming off the wing and tried to go between the legs of the Russian goalie and hit the top of the stick and went up in the air and he fielded it like an outfielder. Broughton has six points in 17 games since coming over from Quebec. Deblo on Samak for the faceoff. Prolock. Starting out for Dinamo. We near the 15-minute mark in the first. Play stopped at the line by Merwan. Kramskoy to Frolov. Now to Samak. Back for Andre Kovalev. He was bumped by Goodenyak, wearing number 93 for Toronto. I think he's the only 93 in the league, isn't he, Harry? He sure is. Some of these teams running out of numbers. Devlois. Out to center, Frolov. For Dinamo to Samak. Leonov takes a bump from Aya Brady. Aaron Broughton to Devlois. He turns in his own zone for the lead. Now fires it in to the Dinamo zone. Prolock. The Kramsgoy. Kramsgoy picks it up behind the goal. Lomakin to Frolov. Dinamo having trouble moving it past center. Dave Hannon took a hit from Zan. Not Dave Reed. A shot from a bad angle. That's kicked away by Stolenkov. Kevin McGuire. Dump the Dinamo player. Lomakin into leap territory. He hands it off. Andrei Yepsi a shot. And that's grabbed by Alan Bester. He holds on. It's 2-2 at the Garden. Go beginning this NHL tour tonight here at Maple Leaf Gardens in a 2-2 tie with 406 left in the first period. Michelle Petit to Joe Sacco. He shoots it into the Dinamo zone. Pearson left the puck in the corner. And it's cleared by Galchenya. He was trying to send Dora Fayev in alone. Delenkov into the corner. Pearson kicks it behind the goal. Popekin around the board. Gill keeps it in for the Leafs. Crucial Niski and front. Sacco a shot over top of the goal. Out comes Delchenyuk. He gives it to Popekin. Shot high and wide. And Crucial Niski tips it out. Filamonov with both goals for Dinamo in the first. Gives it to Delchenyuk. He was stopped by Crucial Niski at the line. Pearson works over Philomonov. Just outside the leaf bench. Petit's pass behind Gill. Dora Fayev pokes it into the corner, then lost it to Gill. He sends it up the boards for Paul Fenton, and he just dumps it out for Toronto. 2.49 left in the first period. Good in yet. To Al Brady. Mike Miller 
Off the boards for Dom Foos. And play called on the offside. One thing to remember, uh, if this is the first game you're watching in, in this tour, is that they've waived the stick rule. Here are the players that have been drafted to play for the uh, Dynamo team. And you can see that uh, all these players are 23 years or younger. And we'll probably see a couple of those in this league before long. As if you've got the money, the Russian players have the time these days. A lot of players on Hemic area had big shots, and as you were saying, yeah, no they, stick rule, big they, curve. They've waived the curvature, half-inch curvature rule the NHL has for this tour, so many of the Soviet players have a stick that would be illegal by NHL rule. Fox still in the lead zone. Korolev kept it on side. I Brady. That's in front of his own goal with Korolev right after him. Good in yet. Benton finally gets it out for Toronto. Korolev brings it right back in. Side steps the check from Fenton. Miller flips it out to the center. Karpatsev off the board. Fenton was going to the bench. And it's brought into Godinia. Brought in through center for Toronto. For Lucien Debluoff. Prolov picks it up. 139 left in the first period. Leonov. Ridden to the ice by Richardson. Lead pass for Marowa. Gives it to Broughton into the slot. Side of the goal to Debois. Back to Broughton. A shot. And that's kicked away by Stolenkov. Richardson at the point. Puck high on the glass. And the Leafs called on an offside. 113 remaining in the first. Leafs and Soviets 2-2. Two -two. Here's the Russian stick rack. And you can see, although it's not as clear there as maybe you'd like, that some of those sticks, there's one that's probably illegal. And for all we know, a couple of the Leafs may have snuck a sneaker in there that isn't quite passable in their next game against Minnesota on Thursday night. Zamnoff wins the draw from Hannon. Sorokin to Zamnoff. He drops it off to Uden. His pass hit the stick of Hannon. Lomakin spins around to center. Less than a minute to go on the first in a 2-2 tie. McGuire to Dave Hannon. Reed breaking for the minute, and he got a stick on it. But again, Stolenkov came diving across for Dinamo. Sorokin around the boards and out for Dinamo. The D to Todd Gill. He shoots it in. Stolenkov stops it behind the net. Uden up the boards for Lomakin. Uden. Lead pass for Zamnoff. That play broken up and Petit dumps it out for the Leafs with 24 seconds left in the first. Sorokin. Gets a return pass from Galchenyuk. Gorafayev tips it in. Forty Namo. Puck came right in front. Gorafayev was tied up and the Leafs crucial miski. Then sack away on the left side with five seconds. Drop pass to Gill. The shot. And the save by Stolenkov, who didn't come up to challenge as the horn sounds to end the first period. Well, a very friendly period. A couple of body checks, but not much in the way of intensity. Some nice passes, a couple of weird goals, and it's 2-2 after the first period of this game here on New Year's Day. Coming right up, Grant Pollock will talk with Lee. A couple of disputed goals in the first. This was the second one by Dinamo. So Bester makes the save, but he stops it when he's in the net. And you can see Marowelli right there pointing, saying, Alan, you got the puck, but it's over the line. And the Russian player was behind Fester. He had been thrown into the net on the first scramble. Stolenkov for the Dinamo squad faced 11 shots in the first period, while Alan Bester in the Leafs net faced a total of nine. Dmitry Filimonov with both goals for Dinamo tonight. Dave Hannon and Rob Pearson, the rookie, have scored for the Leafs. And we're just about set to start the second period. Dom Foos, Fenton, and Miller for the Leafs against Samak, Kovalev, and Leonov. For Dinamo, Gudenyuk into the corner for Fenton. He bumps with Kovalev. Ayafredi behind his net. 
Gudniak pokes it ahead to Miller. Prolock to Kramskoy. Miller overskated the puck at center. Zaymak slides it into the lead zone. Gudniak one-hands it in front. Miller for Fenton. Now Gudniak brings it out for Toronto. He bumps with Andre Kobolev near center. Gudniak to the open wing to Mike Miller. Aaron Broughton a long shot, and that's left easily by Shalinkov. He just had a stint with the Soviet national squad. Mike Miller couldn't get anywhere at center against Kramskoy. Miller again, a long shot, and once again into the glove of Shalinkov. Lomakin sends it down the board. Zamnov missed Andreevsky with a pass. Lomakin picks it up again. Zamnov the center has Lomakin with him. Andreevsky is trailing the play, and Lomakin is knocked to the ice by Richardson. Andreevsky to the side of the net, and Richardson was there again for Toronto. One and a half minutes gone in the second period, a 2 2 tie. Sorokin to Andreevsky. And he's upended by Kerbers. Newton pins Kerbers on the boards. Reed in the slot. And the puck just came out. Lomakin lost the puck to Dave Hannon, but Sorokin was there for Dinamo. Marwa at the point. Hannon let the puck go, and Alexander Newton comes up the boards. Gives it to Dora Payev. He's stopped by Marwa. And the checking is tight to start the second period. And the Leafs called on a two-line offside pass. Well, let's have a look at what happened out west in the World Junior Tournament. Canada, Dick Todd and the Canadian team beat the Pins 5-1. The USA with 18 late goals nipped Norway 19-1. <laughs> and in a very big game as far as Canada's concerned tonight, the Soviets and Czechs play, and that game is not underway yet. Here at Maple Leaf Gardens, 2.04 gone in the second period, a 2-2 tie. Kopikin backhands it into the lead zone. Todd Gill behind the net. Dilamanov back in his own zone for Dinamo. McGuire for checking for the lead. Dora Fayez. The Dilamanov behind the goal, now to the captain, Kopikin. Dora Fayev with Galchenyuk and Hyderov. Shot by Dora Fayev, went off the stick of fatigue and high into the seat. outdated piece of literature in Canada is the Leaf Yearbook. Here are the new Leafs since October the 4th. And you can see that they are a much changed team. This guy was in the yearbook, but he wasn't the head man. Lloyd Smith not being criticized quite as much, but the Leafs playing much better. And they get some pretty good looking players back to Wendell Clark. Perhaps from, uh, Thursday night in Minnesota. They say that Lehman might play Saturday. Tom Ferguson skating. Ramage is over the flu. That should all spell trouble for the North Stars. Leaf just three points back with a game in hand. Crucial Nitsky trying to set up Sacco in front. Dilamana. Pass on the right side to Dora Fayette. Drop for Pupikin. And that pokes away. For Pearson, and he's beaten to the puck by Stolenkov as they had a collision. Dora Fayev looking for Galchenyuk. I afraid he starts back for the Leafs with Pearson. Leaves the puck for Sacco. He goes around Philomonov and then lost the puck to Hyderov. Popekin slowly to center. Long shot off the stick of Bester. Andreevsky into the corner after it. He bumps with Kerbers. Instant Dom Booth for Toronto. To Mike Miller. 
Vince was saying doesn't know whether he'll be involved in the shootout. Think there's a pretty good chance. Miller along the board. The curvers at the point. He backhands it into the corner. Miller through the slot off Andrzejewski's stick. Pressure here by the Leafs. Miller in the corner. Behind the net for Paul Fenton. He centers it. And a backhand by Domfus. He was on his knees and he sent it wide. Curvers behind the goal for Fenton. He's there with Karpatsa. Long lead pass. And here's the break. 40 down. Korolev moving in. Shoot. Good save by Alan Fenton. Big save by the Leafs Spencer to keep the score knotted at two. a long pass up the middle right through the faceoff dot and two not one but two Russians get away Richardson puts a little heat just as the Russian shoots it but Alan Bester just like picking cherries makes the best stop by either goaltender so far tonight faceoff to the left of Bester W on Samak Aaron Broughton moving early Hodges drops it in. Leonoff goes to the boards with Devlois. Gill working over Andre Kovalev, who continues to work. Gives it to Samak. Stand on his pass, and Gill moves it up the boards for Marawa. Kramstoy trying to pinch, and the puck comes out to the Dinamo line. Ramstoy. Lead pass for Kovalev. He's taken to the boards by Gill. Michelle Petit. Up the boards for Marawa. He can't dump it out. Petit to center. He put it on Leonov's stick. Andreevsky. Hit Samak to the backhand. Got a shot away off the stick of Gill. Deblois off the board. Here's Uden moving in. for Dinamo, the shot. And Fester makes a good save. Marawa off the glass. And the puck goes into the crowd. Well, Samak is the uh, leading scorer, as we mentioned at the top of the show. And he is a dangerous customer with the puck. Five foot nine, 185, which is about the normal size for most of the Russian forwards on this team. Not tall, quite strong for their height. And this guy not only leads the scoring this year, but led the team with goals last year. And currently is fifth in the scoring in the Russian league. They just completed stage one of their season. Still another stage to come in the Soviet Union. Lomakin dumps it into the lead zone. Six minutes gone in the second period. A 2-2 tie. That was the score after one. Andreevsky waiting for help from Zamnov and a whistle from referee Dan Marowelli. Well, the Damasco Dynamo is an athletic club. And uh, the players that play on this team live uh, on a site where they have training camp about 40 miles from Moscow. They stay there and the coach gives them time to go home every once in a while. They are fed there. And the interpreter was telling me this morning that they get much better food there than they would at home. And as a result, all of them uh, think it's a good idea to stay there. They make about 600 rubles a month. The average Russian makes 300 rubles. And if you want to buy a video recorder in Russia, it costs 10,000 rubles. So you can see that the times are tough in Russia. These players get a chance to get out of there and get their hands on some hard currency with which they buy some products uh, out of Russia which they never could get here. Alexander Gudenyuk 
will get his hands on some hard currency now that he's a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. You had a look at backup goalie Jeff Reese, and he's set to relieve Alan Bester at the midway mark of this second period. Bester's made a couple of fine saves here in the second period to keep the score knotted at two. Galchenyuk, number 15, will take the draw against Crucial Niski. Big Mike, who played on three Stanley Cup winners with the order. Delinkoff out to center. Luke Richardson right back in for the Leafs. Popekin behind his goal. Lead pass to Galchenyuk. You can see, Bruce, that one of the strategic changes the Russian coach made in the first intermission was to get them to try some longer passes up the middle. They've got people away once for breakaways and had some had nice long breakout passes using that strategy. If they're, if they're picked off, it'll be a breakaway against them. And Joe Sacco nearly had one. Galchenyuk to Dora Faya. He stops along the board. Got it to the point, but it came past Dolomanov, Opekin. Watched by Crucial Niskin. He just shoots the puck down the ice. Tom Kerbers back to touch it. 12.45 is the time left in the second period. It's 2-2. This is the test. Does your TV sample up to 248 points on the screen for sharpness, brightness, contrast, and color? Does it compare them with 40 different ideal high-definition TV scenes stored in the memory and correct the picture 60 times each second? If it does, you're watching Sony Trinitron XBR with ASC, a picture-quality breakthrough. For you, the test is over. For everyone else, the test has just begun. Trinitron XBR with ASC, only from Sony. The well, last year's championship by this team was the third time that they have won the Soviet title. And as I mentioned earlier, 13 times before last year, Red Army won it. Red Army does not get all the players anymore. They may get them for a year or two when they draft them into the Army, but then to keep them after two years, they have to purchase them from the club team. So they aren't going to be the powerhouse necessarily year after year after year the way they have been in Russia. Face off to the Red of Stalinkov. Bowden up the board to Andreevsky. He gives it to Korolev. To Yakubov. Back to Korolev, who was stopped on a breakaway earlier in the period. Karpatsov a shot that drifted wide of the net. And Donfus tips it out. Karpatsov at center off the board. Fenton was there. Scored 32 goals last season for the Winnipeg Jets. Paul Fenton, Luke Richardson. Flips it in wide. Bowden to the point. Here's Yakubov with Andreevsky. Karpatsov trailing the play. Yakubov tried to do it himself. And Petit has the puck. Around the board to Mike Miller. Korolev, long shot, Bester the save, and a rebound goes to Gill. He coughs it up in front to Samak. Rolls it in front. And Kovalev couldn't get a shot away. And he was tied up by Michel Petit. Well, the Russians are moving a little faster and passing a little crisper, and the Leafs have slowed up a little. We were talking about championships in Russia. Red Army has won 32 of them. In the next four games on our Soviet tour telecast will involve the Red Army, who have some of the very fine young players in uh, the Soviet Union, and they'll be severely tested traveling through the Smythe Division. But you'll be able to see all those games on these same stations. It's going to take a while for some of those other teams to catch up to the Red Army. <laughs> you know, they're only drawing two or 3,000 fans in Russia, and one of the big problems for these club teams who have lost their, their uh, financial help from the government, now they have to do it on their own, and that's exactly why they're selling players to the National League. And I think we'll see more of them coming over, like Gudniak, who was... I think uh, Floyd Smith was saying he gave the team, or will give the team if he does make the National League, about $100,000 in hard cash. And without it, they can't operate a program. Todd Gill to Aaron Broughton. And against Transcoy, he dropped it, put it on Leonov's stick. 
Andre Kovalev to Samak, edge of the circle, he shoots, scores! Well, Alan Vester has let more than his share of goals in through his legs, and that one was no exception. Samak really pulled the trigger. But I, uh, you could see that Vester was a little upset with himself for letting it go in. He said it a lot of times, Vester's a small goalie. He gets into that crouch, and sometimes he's got the corners covered a little bit, but he can't get his legs back together to stop the shot. And with 10.57 left in the second period, the leading scorer in this team puts one in to make it 3-2. Jeff Reese continues to warm up, and he'll be in the net shortly. As Dinamo has its first lead at 3-2. Here they come again, Lomakin in front. And they just let the puck go to the net. Andrew Yevsky bangs his stick on the ice because he didn't get a shot away. Well, the Russian team is starting to get their legs a little bit, and the Conor May police had better pick up the intensity or this game is going to get away on them. Here's Reed with McGuire. It's a nice shot! The save by Stolenkov. McGuire can't believe it. As Stolenkov keeps it out. And Dinamo still leads the hockey game 3-2. We did catch that smile, and you don't see many of the Russian players smiling. This guy scored a goal in last year's Dinamo victory over the Leafs, 7-4 here at Maple Leaf Gardens. This is the fourth time that Moscow Dinamo team has toured North America, and their record up to, but not including tonight, is 7-5-2. and two. Goodniak at the left point. Around the boards for Dave Reed. In the corner for McGuire, he let it go to Hannett. Elchenyuk with McGuire. Filamonov picks it up. His pass went off Reed. McGuire and Hannon for checking for the leap. Dave Reed keeps it in. And now it's poked out by Filamonov. Galchenyuk to Popekin. Off the board to Hyderov. His pass behind Galchenyuk at center. Filamonov sends it in for Dinamo. Norafaya. Back to Popekin into the corner. Dorafaya trying to roll it in front. Galchenyuk back to Dorafaya, but he can't get a shot away as Gudinyuk was there for the lead. Alaya Brady trying a rush. Got as far as the leap line. And Hyderov brought it in on the offside. 10-33 has been played in the second period at 3-2 Dinamo. And Jeff Reese is now coming in to replace Alan Vester, who gave up three goals and made some pretty good stops. Jeff Reese has a record this year of 2-7-1, 4.35 goals against average. Went down to Newmarket after hurting his knee and played some games, but the way Peter Ings been playing, Reese can't get in the goal. So he'll get 30 minutes of game atmosphere right now. And Alan Vester made some big stops, and I think he only could have been criticized for letting that last one in, and it was a pretty hard shot. Vester faced 13 shots in the game. Stolenkov stays in goal for Dinamo, and he's seen 14 so far tonight. Reese handling the puck for the first time to Luke Richardson. Sacco tipped it to center. Karpatsa for Dinamo. Korolev lost it to Sacco, now to Tom Kerbers. He's also had a tough time fitting into the Leaf lineup with them playing so well defensively. Rob Ramage, the captain, out with the flu tonight. And Dave Ellett also not dressed on defense for the Leafs as Kerbers touches the puck, and it's icing against Dinamo. Well, I'm sure that Tom Kerbers uh, would like to play a lot more, even if it means going to another team. And the Toronto Maple Leafs need for a center iceman where they do have more than their share of players who can play in the league is on defense. Goodniak comes through and looks like he can play. Shannon's playing very well in Newmarket. 
Marsh could still play in the league. So they got eight or nine defensemen uh, that Tom Watt could use. And I think he'd like to use one of them to get a center. Harry Neal has a feeling there may be a few deals in the NHL in the next few days. Yeah, there are a number of teams now that uh, have to get something going or they're going to get themselves in trouble in their own division. The general managers are all meeting for their annual get-together in Phoenix next week. So when you get 21 general managers talking about uh, what their team needs, quite often you see the odd trades come out of it. Harry, too bad you lost your general manager's job. They always meet where you can play golf in the winter. Yeah, right? that's uh, not a coincidence, I can tell you that. But they do spend a lot of time meeting. And even on the golf course, a businessman will tell you, Bruce, some of the biggest deals in the world are made on golf courses. Andre Kovalev. Tried to feed Lee on off. He attempted to sweep it in front. Paul Fenton for Toronto. Very difficult for the Leafs to play their style if they're not up to the game, get thinking about it all day, and play with lots of intensity. Because playing good defensive hockey isn't much fun, and they're not playing like they have played lately this evening. Benton behind the goal to Miller. To the backhand. He was hooked on the play by Kramskoy, and Leonov gives it to Andre Epstein. And he uses big reach on Goodenyuk. Aaron Broughton. To Michelle Petit, 7.28 to go, second period, 3-2, Dinamo. Sorokin, pass at center for Lomakin, Goodenyuk for Marowa. Sorokin to Andre Yepsky. Lomakin trailing the play, Andre Yepsky a shot, taken high by Reese, and he holds on for a draw. The Leafs trailing, 3-2. Well, there's one reason why the Leafs defense Core is playing better, the addition of Michel Petit. He's been tough, he's contributed offensively, and he's been much more consistent than he was in Quebec this early this season, and that has really helped the Toronto Maple Leafs defense through. Petit with his fourth NHL team now has 201 points in his career. Now I up Brady. Rolls it in for Deblois, goes to the net. And he put it through the crease to Roken. Knocked down Aaron Broughton, and the Leafs will go to the power play for the first time tonight. Interference will be the call on Sorokin. 22-year-old, six foot one, 190-pounder, really took, really took Broughton into the net. And here's the chance. Deblois jumps by the silver. Oh, there's the penalty right there. And the Leafs get a power play opportunity with 6.51 left in the second period to tie this game up. And Sir Guy Sorokin will take an interference penalty. Leafs power play working at close to 15% clip, 14.9 in the NHL. And it has improved up to uh, 16 they're uh, 18th spot after being mired deeply in 21st and at home they're in 16th spot so special teams have improved but when you get as badly in the hole as they got in the first 25 games it takes another 25 to even get back to being where you're at all respectable and as most teams a little better at home than on the road with the man advantage Todd Gill the Mike Miller crucial Niski in the slot Sacco also on the lead power play Miller a high pass to Gill at the point. Back for Miller. The Sacco for Krusilniski. Return pass to Sacco. So Pekin. Around the glass. Todd Gill was waiting. And it's put by him by Galchenyuk. He's with Hyderov. Two on one across the Hyderov. The shot. He missed the goal. Soviet nearly scoring shorthanded. Sacco drives it in. Crucial Niski in the corner. At the point that Tom Kerber's the slap shot pass saved by Stolenkov. And he hangs on with Joe Sacco after the rebound. Todd Gill, who has played some of the best hockey I've seen him play in the last 13, 12 or 13 games, has a tough time deciding on this play whether to pinch in or not. And he ends up doing neither, backing out or pinching in. 
and gets badly caught for a two on one. Well played back here. And the Russian number 21 didn't make a great attempt at, at scoring on Hyderov. And Todd Gill, who really has uh, blossomed under Tom Watt when he was uh, at the end of his career almost with Doug Carpenter and has played quite nicely in defense and has played aggressively and much smarter than he was earlier in the year. Berber's shot hits Baymax stick. He turns and dumps the puck down the ice. 55 seconds left in the penalty to Sorokin. 3-2, Dinamo leading. And Dinamo does have a goal on the power play tonight. That by Philemon off in the first. Dom Foot working down the board, goes behind the net. Setting up on the Leafs power play. I.F. Brady from the left point. A weak shot. Mirawaz pass behind Dom Foot. I.F. Brady. Couldn't get to the front of the goal. Prolon off the boards and down the ice. That attempt by I of Brady to stick handle by two guys, I mean, that's just not concentrating at all. And the Leafs have to concentrate with every stride they take if they're going to be any good, and that's what's hurting them tonight. Paul Fenton for Don Foose under his stick. Can't blame them in the way. They're trying madly to catch uh, Minnesota and stay ahead of Quebec, and this game doesn't mean anything. But still, it shows what I've been trying to tell you tonight, that mental intensity is vital for the Leafs. Dinamo back at full strength. Leaps 0 for 1 with the man advantage in Dinamo. Called for icing. Samak has given Dinamo the lead here in the second. second period that by Alexander Samak of Dinamo and they lead 3-2 with 4.43 to go in period two. Samak one of the stars on this Dinamo squad. Played in three world junior tournaments so lots of can young Canadian players have played against him before. Michelle Petit flips it into the corner for Dave Reed. McGuire and Hannon behind the goal with Zamnot. And the Soviet comes out with a puck, and he's grabbed and hauled down by McGuire. And Dinamo will go to the power play for the second time tonight. They have scored on the power play and lead 3-2. Round of penalty number 18, Kevin McGuire, two minutes for hold. Time 15.35. Kevin McGuire for hold. Time 15.35. <laughs> well, this move by McGuire to earn himself a holding penalty may be very popular in one of the many U.S. college football games played today, but it's a no-go in the National Hockey League, and he did it within about nine feet of Mr. Marawelli. There's the coaching staff. Well, you can't get away with making a mistake if you play for one of these Russian teams. There's six guys taking notes every time you're out there. Tough to hide when you go to the bench. <laughs> you're not kidding. Dinamo on a power play, leading three to two. Pass too far ahead for Zemnot. Jeff Reese, who replaced Alan Bester at the halfway mark of the period. Cleared it to the point. Well, Mackin hops on it for Dinamo. To Andre Yepsky. As Dinamo sets up, Andre Yepsky showing patience to Rogan. To Zamnoff, the slap shot, and that's kicked away by Jeff Reese. Andre Yepsky. To assistant captain Will Mackin hits Uden. He tried to set up Andre Yepsky in front. I afraid he blocked the pass and the Leafs clear it. He really jolted Uden. He got him in the middle of his shot. And those hurt because you're concentrating getting the shot of the pass away. And he ran into all of Ally Afraidy. 
Dora Fayez nearly lost it at center to Hannon. Drops it off to Zamnoff. Didn't get much on the pass. Popekin moving up for the shot. And a late whistle from linesman Ron Finn, who has his family here tonight. And the captain here, Popekin, does not agree with Ron Finn's decision as whether that puck came out or not. But perhaps he doesn't have the linguistic wherewithal <laughs> to voice his displeasure to Mr. Finn. 51 seconds left in the penalty to Kevin McGuire. The T hit Reed in the skate. Dora Fayad drops it back. Here's Popekin. Rink wide pass to Galchenyuk. Down the board, Dora Fayez to Filamonov, back to Dora Fayez. Filamonov at the point. Dora Fayez edge of the circle to Popekin on the other side. A slap shot and an easy save for Jeff Reese. Hannon <laughs> can't backhand it out. Galchenyuk. Filamonov in from the point. Lost the puck at the last moment, and Hannon shoots it down the ice. Just five seconds to go on this Dynamo power play. 2.25 in the period. Popekin into the lead zone, checked at the line. Galchenyuk, his shot was blocked, slid to the front of the goal, and it's Richardson for Toronto. Soviets intercept, Galchenyuk in front, door by a scores! Well, a very pretty goal by the Dynamo team from Moscow, but it, it, it resulted after a bad, bad giveaway. The Leafs got the puck almost out, and four Leafs were heading out thinking this puck was going, but it never made it. Look at all the Leafs going in the wrong direction. One pass, and then he makes a move here that Barishnikov would be proud of. Here's the giveaway right here. And after the giveaway, here's the pass, drop pass, another pass, and then this guy puts the puck pass, Jeff Reed, who was left in an awful tough spot. Great stick handling. Dora Fayev's first Super Series goal, and it's 4-2. As Reese made a blocker save on Yakubov. Sacco fell down as he raced for the puck. Sacco's played some good hockey for the Leafs, but he hasn't scored yet. He has five assists, he's smart, he's quick, and he's a goal scorer. There has been everywhere else, but he's had tough luck. To and there was a good example. He might have got something there, but he tripped. Soviet steal it again. Pearl out. For Yakubov, the shot, good save by Reese. Andreevsky jamming away at it. And Reese able to cover up, but a couple of giveaways by the Leafs defense and it nearly cost them another goal. Well, Luke Richardson, who was in on the Soviet goal, their fourth goal of the night, nearly got himself another negative assist as he overskates the puck right here. All he has to do is flip it out. It's only three feet from the blue line. He can't. And this Russian here, he must have thought he was on Lake Ontario. Look at the time he takes. Where is everybody? Oh, shoot it, he says, and he nearly scores. But the Leafs have fallen asleep. And it's just, uh, it's tough. Real tough when you play 80 games and you have to win every one of them, as the Leafs seem to do to make the playoffs, to waltz in here and play a friendly match and not make some mistakes that you wouldn't normally make. Down to 115 in the second period. Back is dumped down the ice. And they'll bring it back into the lead zone for another faceoff. One of the longest hockey sticks I've seen play by anybody is used by this fellow here. Proloff, he's a big guy. He's six foot four, 215 pounds. Calgary's 231st pick in 89. And look at the length of that stick. Two trees, I'm sure, to make that stick. And he can handle the puck with it. He, he reminds me of Ulf Samuelson, or Shell Samuelson from Philly. A big, long guy. Ramstoy slap shot off a stick. And the fans at that end of the garden were ducking as the puck went rocketing in there. Six foot four. And his stick is six foot three. <laughs> I don't think there's another, uh, there is a, a legal length of a stick in, in the National League. 
Now, I see that tape between his hands. Surely that's not two shafts taped together, Bruce, is it? I don't see any Russians using aluminum stick. And I haven't when I when we did the Himmick game either. You can look, Bruce, from the Red Army to see if there's anything, but perhaps that bad has not hit Russia yet. I'll let you know, Harry. Vince Domfus. The Miller at center. He was checked. Domfus again for Toronto. Going wide. Takes a shot from a bad angle and an easy save for Stalinka. And the Soviets give it away. Domfus to Petit. Moves in from the right point. Couldn't get set for a shot, and it deflected just wide. Andre Kovalev to Samak, one-on-one against Todd Gill. Checked at the line. Mike Miller, 27 seconds remaining in the period. Leonov to Frolov. Back to Leonov around Don Boost at the line. Goes for the net. But had it swept off his stick by Todd Gill. He rolls the puck down the ice. The link off comes out to play it. And the clock is down to six seconds. The fans booing and Broughton stood there as Stalinkoff held the puck. In our second intermission, Lawrence Martin, author of The Big Red Machine, a, a very uh, comprehensive book about hockey in Russia. He was the Globe and Mail correspondent in Moscow for years. And if you haven't bought a a book for your friend for Christmas, like you, Bruce, haven't bought me anything yet, that would be a nice addition right there. I'm sure it's full of all kinds of information about players that we're now seeing in the National Hockey League. And stay tuned for the shootout. Very interesting part of the NHL Super Series. Action is fast and furious in the shootout. Yeah, that's been a very popular addition to this. Uh, five players from each team at the start of the third period take penalty shots. And we see some pretty good-looking goals or some pretty good-looking goaltending. Some teams use that to decide who gets the extra point at the end of a tied game. Can the Leafs put Bester back in or does Reese have to play goal? I think that they can nominate either goaltender. They might think of dressing Peter Ring and just using him for the shootout. Sorokin controls off the draw and backhands it down the ice. Well, as I expected, uh, uh, the Moscow uh, Dynamo team skated a lot better that period most often I, I'm a little wondering a little bit why Zamnoff taking it but and the Leafs have selected players I don't think any of those will be a surprise Joe Sacco might be but I'm sure they want to see if he can get a goal in the National Hockey League and this is one way to try Mike Miller's a good goal scorer Tom Foos leads the team Marowa has really been in an awful slump three goals in his last 18 games Alan Bester back in goal for the Leafs, and Andre Trepelov, the backup, goes for Dinamo in the shootout. And these are penalty shots. The same rules apply for penalty shots. The goalie can't come out of the crease until the player touches the puck. There will be a penalty shot style shootout between the two teams. Each team has selected five shooters, which will alternate shots. Paul Morris here. explaining the rules of the shootout to the fans here at Maple Leaf Garden. Trepelov loosening up. Trepelov has not had a warm-up. He did not play either the first two periods. Unless they were shooting some pucks at him in the hallway just inside the dressing room. He hasn't seen the puck so far tonight. And Alan Vester came out with about nine minutes left in the second period. was replaced by Jeff Reese. But maybe Tom Watt figures Alan Vester is a better breakaway type goaltender than Reese is. He did make a nice stop on the breakaway. Of the 10 games played so far in the Soviet Super Series with the NHL, the National League leading 6-4. The Red Army won the shootout today in Chicago as well as the game 4-2. Now I mentioned earlier that uh, I think the International Hockey League, if a game's tied after overtime, they have a shootout to decide who gets the point. They each get a point for a tie. The extra point goes to the team that wins the shootout. There's the Leafs cheering section on the bench. The players that are involved are on the ice. And here we go with the shootout. Stamak leads it off for Dinamo against Alan Bester. And a good save by Bester as Stamak went to the backhand. I think your best bet to score on this is to shoot it and not try and beat the goaltender because the goaltender is backing up pretty quickly. 
And when you look up 15 feet out, he's out of the net, but when you get there, he's back in. There's Marawa against Trepawa. And Trepawa kicked it out, and Marawa went crashing into the boards. Both teams 0 for 1. You might recall when our first telecast, the Canadians failed the score against Kyrgyzov of Phoenix. Can you give a goaltender a tripping penalty on a breakaway? Andre Kovalev for Dinamo against Spencer. He scores! Now one thing Kovalev did that, that Mirawa didn't, he got the puck off to the side. Mirawa had his right in front, so there was no doubt in the eyes of the Soviet goalie that Mirawa was going to try and take it. On Kovalev, he had the puck up to the side, and Spencer didn't know whether he was going to deep or shoot it. We swing for Domfus is robbed by Krepilov. And it's one nothing for Dinamo in the shootout. That was a great stop by Krepilov. Top. Leona for Dinamo. He shoots and Fester gets the peak. The fans really enjoyed it. They did in Montreal when we did the Himmick game. And all through the Himmick uh, tour in the National League, Darcy Rhoda, who saw all those games representing the National League, told me this is the highlight of many of the games. Miller for the lead. He tried to go high. And right over the top of the goal. And everyone was ducking in their living rooms on that shot. Well, the penalty shot success ratio in the National League is about 36 to 40 percent. We're below that here so far. Andre Lomakin for Dinamo. He shoots a nice shot to the sixth side, and they've assured themselves of at least a tie. Well, when you can get the puck out to the side and out in front of you, you can look at the puck and the net at the same time and then just flick it by him. That's exactly what he did. Zacko looking for his first goal. And a pass saved by Krepilov. And they'll continue the shootout, but Dinamo will win it, leading 2-0, and one shooter to come from each club. The The final shooter for Dinamo is Alexei Zemnov, number 26. Good move to the forehand, and three goals for Dinamo. 3-0 they lead. Red Army winning in Chicago this afternoon. And Dinamo winning tonight in Toronto. See if the Leafs can get one by Krepilov. Mike Virtual missed it. He'll score, Bruce. What a forecast for that. Harry Hill with Mike Virtual missed it. Make sure the Leafs aren't shut out. Dinamo wins the shootout by a count of 3-1. Three to one. So Dinamo leads the hockey game 4-2 and wins the shootout. 3-1. Triple off looked pretty good for a guy that hasn't played all night. And as a reward for shutting down the lead four to five times, he gets to go and watch the rest of the game from the bench. But he did look sharp. Kovalev scores the first goal of the shootout, a nice play. Lomak and another nice shot. And Bester had, had no chance. But this guy might be the king of the great Canadian shootout. But that doesn't mean he's going to play. Third period is underway. Trepilov and Bester are back on the bench. And Reese is in goal. Along with Stalenkov. Pull the left. Checked by Richardson, Mike Bruchelnitsky, who scored the goal in the shootout for the Leafs, brings it out to Pearson. He bats it in to the Dinamo zone. Prolock turning in the corner, trying to work it up the board for Kobolev. Bruchelnitsky at center. He lifts it in. Stalinkoff loves it. Leonov couldn't clear it. Don a good move, a shot! Stalinkoff, a pass save. He looked cool. Making that stop on Domfu. Shalenkov, six foot one, is a real good stand-up goaltender. Cuts the angle down, soft pads, no big rebounds. He looks good tonight. Leonov fired it into the corner, and there's a penalty upcoming. Elboy. Richard got Richard got the teeth. in the in the right forehead or on the right cheek. He got hit with the puck on that shift. 
and went off. The Leafs take a penalty on the forehead by the look of it. He's a little dazed. The T takes the penalty at the one minute mark of the third period for Elbow. And that's the one thing Tom Watt and the rest of the NHL coaches want to avoid. Not only penalties, but injuries in these exhibition games against the Soviet club. Looks like Richardson will be all right. And Dinamo, one for two with the man advantage tonight, have another shot. Leading four to two, just underway nicely in the third period. Sorokin at the right point. A hard pass off the corner board. Well, Mackin failed to pick it up, and it's fired off the glass by IF Radian down the ice. The link off around the board for Womackin. Referee Marowelli got in the way. Sorokin to Uden. Womackin with Andreevsky. And it's slapped down the ice by Todd Gill. Brought into the puck first. He let it go. And it's picked up by Dora Fayev, who has the fourth goal tonight for Dinamo. 115 in the penalty to Michelle Petit. Sorokin slowly to center. Long slap shot, six saved by Jeff Reed. Todd Gill winding up, and he drives the puck down the ice. Alexander Uden. The Philomonoff looking for the hat trick tonight. Philomonoff at his own line. Couldn't get a pass across and nearly gave Dave Hannon a shorthanded chance. Reed and Hannon run a nice job killing penalties. Obviously, Reed with six shorthanded goals, but I mean just killing the penalties. Both good jobs for Tom Watts. Galchenyuk fell down at the Leafs line and Goodenyuk cleared it to center. Goodenyuk again for the Leafs to Dave Hannon. He sends it into the Dinamo zone. Filamonov behind the goal. 18 seconds to go on the power play, and they have yet to set up. Galchenyuk, ridden to the corner boards by Godinyuk. Dora Fan lost control of the puck. Debluwa, ahead to Aaron Broughton. Galchenyuk, Petit out of the box. And Dinamo one for three with the man advantage. Dora Fayev goes down as he was checked by Debluwa. Kopikin. The Coralev. He's pushed to the ice by Petit. Tom Curvers for Toronto. Leafs need to mount some offense, trailing by two. Karpatsa. To Yakubov. Poked off his stick by Goodenight. Karpatsa rolled it wide of the goal. Fenton dumps it to center. Andreevsky. A long wrist shot. That drifted wide. Goodenyuk on the end of a long shift. Couldn't clear it. Don Fuchs on the left side for Fenton. And the play broken up by Yakubov as Miller had snuck behind the defense. Don Fuchs at center to Mike Miller, former Canadian Olympian. He lifts it in to the Dinamo zone. Four minutes gone in the third period. It's 4-2 Dinamo. Fenton kicks it free. He's bumped by Bouton. Soviets make changes, and Reese gives the puck to Todd Gill, now to Michelle Petit. His pass is picked off. By Leonov. Reed in front. McGuire couldn't get a stick on it. Petit. Behind the goal, throw off to Leonov. And now out of center to C-Mac. He's with Andre Kovalev. Knocked off his stick by Dave Hannon. Reed to Hannon. He's with Kevin McGuire. Gives it to McGuire on right wing. Stops in the corner. Behind the net to Reed. Hannon setting up in front. I have Brady from the point. Hannon. Back in the corner for Kevin McGuire. 11,485 fans here. A pretty good crowd considering the least. This game was not on the Leafs season ticket package. So there's a more significant interest in Toronto in this tournament than in a lot of cities in the National League. Waited a long time for a whistle. Dinamo leading by two.
from uh, Saskatchewan. The Soviets beating the Czechoslovakians 4 0. Sweden 1 0 over Switzerland. Canada has to play the Czechs before they play the Russians on Friday. And remember, no playoff in that tournament. It's the team with the best record. And Canada has that high on their agenda. So, so they have to win. They have to win the next two games to win the tournament. Soviets playing strong hockey in the World Junior and leading at Maple Leaf Gardens tonight, 4-2. Goes Sacco. To Gudenyuk. Moves it to center. Crucial Niski. He's forced back by Zamnov. Gill to Crucial Niski. He ran into Sorokin at the Dinamo line. Todd Gill. Back into the Soviet zone. And he was checked by Sorokin. His pass went off Fenton Skate. Lead pass to Andreevsky. Into the slot. He was looking to set up Uden. Back in the corner, Todd Gill to the side of the goal to Tom Kerber. The Dom Foot. He kicks it back to Paul Fenton. Domfus after a loose puck as Dora Faya failed to clear it. Popekin. Couldn't move it out. Domfus back to center. Todd Gill dumps it in. Philomonov. To Dora Faya. Pass at the leaf line. Shot by Heideroff and the save by Jeff Reese. The D behind the goal. Seven minutes gone in the third. It's 4-2 Dinamo. Marwa backhands it in. Puts it right on the stick of Filamana. Hyderov. Good move on Marwa at center. Sends Galchenyuk in. A shot. A low one. And it went just wide. Dora Faya from a bad angle. That's kicked away by Reese. Mike Miller. Gets the round car pots off, but the play is broken up by Filamonov. And the Soviets dump it out. Dora Fayev giving chase. Reese races out and fired it into the bench, just missing the Leafs coach kitchen. No, it's not a penalty when you shoot it where the glass is in the high. And there's the Mike Kitchen selling Reese. Came too close. Mike uh, Kitchen, the assistant coach of the Leafs, had a distinguished career as a defenseman. He didn't realize he was going to block another shot. No penalty because the puck was shot out of the rink, but not where the glass exists, just where the bench is. And that's why Jeff Rees didn't get a penalty. Yakubov for the faceoff against Devlois. 2-2 Two -two after one. Couple of goals by the Soviets in the second period. Devlois. Puck comes to the edge of the crease and is cleared by Stolenkov. Andreevsky at center. Back to Yakubov. He can't get anywhere. Miller off the boards and out. Karpatsa for Dinamo. Petit left the puck for Gudenyuk. And he just dumps it into the Soviet zone. Karpatsa to Yakubov. Stick handling through center into the leaf zone. Trying to split the defense. Andreevsky turning along the board. Now cuts into the slot. The Yakubov shot off the blocker of Reese. Rebound and the save by Reese on Andreevsky. Back of the point, Kramstoy in the slot for Korolev. Andreevsky after it again. And the puck comes into Reese, who puts his glove on the puck and forces the face off. There's the uh, Russian goalie stick, hot screen. Would have gone over good when the lights went off at the Boston Garden. He's been the only player that could find a stick. <laughs> they don't allow those in the National League to have those colored sticks. 
bothers the shooters in too fact, much. In fact, they're after Gretzky for having one that uh, sparkles. I don't mean sparkles because he uses it so well. Sparkles when you look at it. Dave Reed moving in on the left wing. A swap shot. The link off the save. And the puck is cleared to center. Got that green stick on it. A shot by Reed. Here he is again for the lead. Looking for the career. He scores! Well, McGuire, who's had two great chances tonight, scores on the worst chance of the three of them. And with 10.54 left, perhaps that would breathe a little fresh air into the Toronto Maple Leafs who have been uh, skating in a semi-coma for about 25 minutes now. Reed forecheck here to cause the turnover and then tosses it out in front. It hits the side of the net. And in comes McGuire and taps it in. Here's the forechecking by Reed. He takes the puck away from Frolov. He throws it out. He actually missed the pass out. But in comes McGuire. No one with him. And he taps it into the net to make the score 4-3. 9.06. 9 the time of the goal by Kevin McGuire. He has six on the year. And the Leafs are within one. So that should create some excitement for the a little over 11,000 fans here at Maple Leaf Gardens tonight. They were talking about a crowd of around eight. So a good walk-up crowd tonight. Dave Reed cutting for the net again. Puts it in front of the score! Dave Hines. And this crowd was not sleeping as we have most of those 11,000 now standing and cheering as the Leafs strike quickly. Reed takes a nice pass right here to get himself started in the clear and tosses it back to Dave Hannon right here who really ripped one and the Soviet goalie heard that shot go by him. He didn't see it and Hannon scores the second of the night and it's 4-4. Four -four. And I think we're going to have a very enjoyable last 10 minutes as the Leafs came back to life with two quick goals. That goal by Dave Hannon came 11 seconds after Kevin McGuire had scored. And it's tied at four. The fans chanting, go Leafs, go. I think you're right, Harry. We're in for an entertaining last 10 minutes and 37 seconds. It's very hard to play this game at this level without enthusiasm. The Leafs have tried that since the first period, and it has not worked. But... They have been rejuvenated with those two fast goals. Hyderov blasted a shot, the one over the glass, and into the crowd. Dave Hannon with a couple of goals tonight for Toronto. And as I said earlier, he had gone 13 consecutive NHL games without a goal, and two tonight. So regardless whether these goals count in the standings or not, he's got to feel a lot better about himself. He's played well, and he's had chances, but he hasn't been able to score until this evening. And that kid feels a lot better about wearing his Leafs jacket as they... Come back to tie it. Galchenyuk to Solomonov. He has a pair tonight for Dinamo. Galchenyuk into the lead zone with Dorofaya. Around Gill. Galchenyuk for the crease of shot and a good save by Jeff Reese. Kopikin. Dorofaya was robbed. Soviets beginning to pressure now. Here's him for Stocko. Galchenyuk across to Popekin, just past the midway mark in the third. Two goals by the Leafs, 11 seconds apart in this period, and it's tied 4-4. Heiderhoff skating through center. Into the Leafs zone, but Dora Fayev was offside on the right wing. Well, it's a very difficult job for the coach to talk his players into thinking that a game is important once it starts. They didn't even practice this morning, Toronto, on the normal game day skate. Uh, they don't play again, as I mentioned, to Thursday. So Saturday to Thursday would have been a nice break. And here you're looking at the line of Reed and Hannon, who's got to, and McGuire that have turned this game around for Toronto. And they have been the best three leads offensively. McGuire should have three goals as he missed two great chances. One in the first and one in the second period. It was a great shift for Reed as he set up both of them. Goals by McGuire and Hannett. Tom Watts just gone right around the horn with four lines. But I wouldn't be surprised for 
to see him come out with the Hannon line again and not wait three more shifts for it. Yakubov, is it the Korolev? Andreevsky being double shifted tonight. As Alexei Kovalev played a little in the first but hasn't seen the ice much since. Karpatsov at center. He's forced back by Dom Foos. Andreevsky backhands it into the lead zone. I have Brady banks it off the boards to Dom Foos. Behind his own net, Korolev four checking for Dinano. Dom Foos to Paul Fenton. He dumps it in. Bramstoy and Miller go after it. It's in front of the net. Four players off the score. supplied by the Leafs number 36, Mike Miller, right here to get the puck. It goes off the Soviet defenseman's skate to Don Foos, who sticks it right up inside the goal post to the goalie's left to make it 5-4 with 8.30 to go. Right after that goal, out came the notebook and three Soviets were riding as fast as the Leafs were skating. And Paul Fenton, time 11-3. Tom Watt has watched his lead score three quick ones here in the third. And it's a 5-4 hockey game after they've fallen behind 4-2 after two periods. Just a different Leaf hockey team here in the third, Harry. Success is never achieved without enthusiasm. And the Leafs have had a lot of it lately, but didn't have much going for them tonight after the first period. But they've... Got her going again, and look what's happened. Andreevsky for a little knock, and that play broken up by Richardson. And then it came back into the lead zone, and Dinamo was offside. Well, Vincent Dompus is one Leaf whose offensive production has not fallen off, as have so many Leafs with reference to that. And uh, he, he leads the team in goals, assists, points, game-winning goals, and he may have another game-winning goal that isn't going to count. And he's playing center. He's a better left winger than a center, but he's the best center on this team. So Tom Watt has no choice with such a lack of offensive centers. He's got three or four good defensive ones, but only Kuchelinski and Dom Foos on an every night basis can do it offensively. Dinamo has trailed twice in the hockey game, 1-0 in 2-1. They're now three times in the hockey game, and it's 5-4 now. Came out over the line, Korolev dropped it to Sorokin. Didn't get much on it as he tried to fire it in. Luke Richardson. Watched by Zamnoff to Tom Kerber. Straight up the middle for Deblois. Sorokin for Dinamo. To Alexander Uden, he flipped it to the line. Kerber to Lucien Deblois. He slides it in, and Tom Watt makes changes. Back to Zamnoff. Zamma likes to use the drop pass. Here's the Hannon line again for Toronto. They lead 5-4. Dave Reed stopped at the line. Korolev for Lomakin, but Todd Gill was there. Reed back to Petit. Todd Gill with 7.03 left in the third. Dave Reed to Hannon. Looking for McGuire. He's behind the defense. He picks it up in the circle. In front. Petit trying to get a backhand shot away. Penalty up coming to Dinamo as once again this line of McGuire, Reed, and Hannon is wreaking havoc for Toronto. Garden 
have got a wave going. And so, at the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're riding the high wave with three goals in the last four or five minutes. Nice to see the gardens rocking. Didn't see a scene like this earlier in the season. That's for sure. Kerber, the tackle. Leads goal for one with the man advantage in this hockey game. Mike Miller to Mike Krushelniski. Sacco side of the goal. Back to Krushelniski. Kerbers have moved in from the point. It's Miller to Kerber to I.F. Brady. In front, Sacco poked at it. Went just wide. I.F. Brady along the board. Filamonov off the board to center. Here's Hyderoff, one-on-one against Kerber. He drops it off to Galchenyuk. Sack will stay with him. Crucial Nitsky for the lead. 115 left in the Toronto power play. They lead 5-4, three unanswered goals in the third. Kerber's through center. He slaps it in, that kicked aside by Stolikov. Crucial Nitsky at the point to Todd Gill. His slap shot deflected by Miller wide. Miller behind the net. Kerber's at the point. Crucial Nitsky. Was upended. And the puck's out at center to Todd Gill. Forced back by Korolev. 40 seconds left in the penalty to Dora Faya. 5.25 in the third. Paul Fenton. Looking for Domfus on the right wing. Fenton picks it up. But Domfus was offside on the play. Todd Gill tried to slide a pass from the point to Miller for a tip, and it nearly worked. You, you don't always have to blast it. Now, Miller's just to the goalie's right, and Todd Gill, in the halfway through his slap shot on the backswing, saw Miller and let up and just kind of passed it to him with a shot tight pass, but Miller couldn't tip it in. Raffles wins the draw back to Michelle Petit. Pass off the skate. And Carpazza sends it down the ice. 18 seconds left in the penalty. Vince Donfus with a go-ahead goal here in the third for Toronto. Straight up the ice. Into the Soviet zone. Backhands it around the boards for Mirawad. To Gill. Across to Petit. In the slider. that the Leafs management from Floyd Smith down through the coaching staff are as happy about this goal by Merwa as any goal tonight. He's in desperate need of scoring a few goals as he has admired in a three goal in 18 games. Now he takes the pass across and like we saw Merwa so often last year, find a hole in the armor of the opposition goalie and put it in. And he hasn't been able to do that much this year. Four goals for the Leafs in the third. Lomack into the backhand. Couldn't get a shot away against Godinia. Drops it off, a shot by Sorokin, saved by Reese. And a whistle from Merrill as the puck came loose. And the ammo came very close. But the Leafs maintain their two goal lead. he did last year and he although this goal doesn't count in the book it counts between the ears of Daniel Merwa and that's been the problem with him constantly Pat Merwa says these exhibition games are fun it's the league games that haven't been for him he hasn't been going to the net he hasn't been skating and most importantly he hasn't let that rocket shot go this year 
as often. And those are all things that happen to you when you lose your confidence. Dave Reed, deep into the Dynamo zone. McGuire to it first. Took a solid check from Kramskoy. Zamnoff after it with McGuire. And he may have got a stick in the eye. He got a stick in the face. He was trying to reach around the Russian player and was bordered on holding him. And, and the Russian stick, I think, came back. I don't, I, I don't even think the Russian knew he did it, but he did it. As you can see, McGuire's cut on the bridge of the nose. He's chasing 26, number 18, and 32 is trying to run a bit of interference, and right there, he hooks him. And if Dan Marawelli had our replay, 32 puts his hand up like the wrestlers do in, uh, on television say he didn't mean to do it. And there it is right there. It's easy to say you didn't mean to do it after you've done it, and 32 is gone. Five in a game with 4.10 left. Dynamo penalty number 32, Sergei Sorokin. Five minutes for high sticking and the game is time. Time 15.50. Sergei Sorokin, five minutes high sticking, the game is time. Time 15.50. one of the better leads tonight. Leafs have pretty well salted it away with four goals here in the third and now we'll spend the rest of the game with a man advantage. Major penalty to Sorokin. Well the Soviet team has to go after a shorthanded goal here. Where they're just conceding the loss of four minutes to go. Back in the corner big pile up of players. And a whistle as watching play closely was Marrowelli. Ally Afraidu, whose offensive stats are way down with two goals and 14 assists in 36 games. And the one area that his, uh, his statistics are down is he's only had 45 shots on goal in 36 games. Dave Ellis had 91, Rob Ramage has had 77. They played a little more on the power play. But Al's got one of the hardest shots. In fact, last year at the All-Star game, he had the hardest shot among all the All-Stars. He has to get a couple of shots a night anyway on the goalie. Even if he doesn't score, the goalie rarely catches Ally Afraidi's shot. The puck hits him and is very available for forwards to stick the rebound in. I afraid he couldn't take a shot there as the puck is rolled down the ice. Tom Kerbers, watched by Zamnoff, 320 left in the third period. Crucial Miski. Runs into Karpatsev at the line. Zamnov for Dynamo. Around the boards for Korolev. I afraid he was pinching. Leaps with the man advantage and a two-goal lead. I afraid he skates away from two Soviets. Gives it to Pearson. Crucial Miski for the net. I afraid he is going to score. Not many can shoot it any harder, and he, that was a wrist shot. And a dandy. I afraid he made the play on the rush. Stayed involved in the rush. And it was a Soviet player at center ice in the neutral zone right here that allowed I afraid he to keep going in the rush. And the pass is right here from Pearson, and I am afraid he really let that go right up over the shoulder of the goaltender. There's some guys who have struggled offensively. Hannon, Merwa, McGuire. Now I am afraid he have scored tonight, and that may be the biggest single feature of this victory for the Conor Maple Leafs. Second goal against the Soviets for Al I afraid for T cutting in on the back end and going down on the play with Shkalenkov to make the save. And it's a major penalty, Bruce, so nobody comes out of the box, of course. 
Beach can continue to pour on the offense. They've scored five already this period. Fenton trying to jam it in front. Philibon up to Galchenya. Trepelov, who played the shootout, thought we might see him with Stalinkov surrendering five goals here in the third, but he stayed on the bench. Well, Dinamo goes to uh, Hartford for the next game, and they may play Trepelov and Nazis. They thought they had this game won, and so did most other people, including 20 Maple Leafs, but those quick goals changed the complexion of the game completely. Karpatsev around the boards for Lomakic. Todd Gill behind the goal, swings in front, got a backhand shot away. Stolenkov got that green stick down, and the puck is cleared. Minute and a half to go in the third. Leafs still with the man advantage. Major penalty to Sorokin of Dinamo. Dave Hannon going for the net. Got a shot away. Stolenkov the save. And it's underneath the Soviet goalie who hangs on for a faceoff. Down to 117 to go. And the Leafs have a three goalie. Four. Takes a shot to Kerbers. His last shot saved by Stolenkov. Andreevsky. Gives it to Lomakin. Less than a minute to play. 7-4 to four, Toronto. A five-goal outburst in the third by the Leafs. Andreevsky hit by Goodenough. Well, Mack in a good move in front, but couldn't get a shot away against Kerber. Now Goodenough throwing his weight around as he stepped into Andreevsky again. Goodenough. First Soviet to play for Toronto. Long lead pass for Hannon. Shovels it behind the goal. Broughton in the corner. Ten seconds left. Both peeking around the boards. Todd Gill with one last chance. He shot off the skate of Broughton. It goes to the boards. And the game is over. Well, the Toronto Maple Leafs with uh, 20 minutes at the start of the game where they equaled the Soviets in uh, uh, effort and intensity. And then about uh, 30 minutes where they were a bad second and they got down 4-2. But in the last 10 minutes of the game, this Moscow Dynamo team could not handle the Toronto Maple Leafs. And uh, they came out 7-4 winners. And now for the uh, handshakes after international games. And it was a friendly match. Uh, Maguire may not agree with me on that one as he gets cut with about four minutes to go. But it's tough to play against a team that has the speed and talent of the Soviet team and not take them out so they can't go where they want to go after they pass the puck. And when the Leafs got enjoying the game a little more in the third period, Moscow Dynamo couldn't handle them. And uh, Goodenyuk played pretty well. He, he didn't try to do too much. I don't think he's in the kind of shape he's got to get in to play in this league, but he hasn't played for a long time, and uh, he's getting a handshake there from some of his buddies. Five unanswered goals by the Leafs in the third period. The final score is seven to four. Toronto will return with our Molson player of the game announcement right after this.